in my time pondering. I had to think of all the things that God saved me from. What he removed from my world. What, how, he, how he extracted me from different places. The things that he's protected me from. The things that I didn't do. I, things I didn't get hurt doing. The things I was saved from. The things I didn't get killed doing. All the things. That, the times we went to war for different things. Not, not physically, but in our heads for what ground that we now take. And God gives each of us a choice. To serve him sincerity, sincerely for the right motives, the right reasons. To really follow our hearts and what we need to do. And, and I have to be honest, when, we, when you stand up here and you become a leader of a church, and you become a leader of an organization, a ministry, you have to listen to what God's saying of where you're going to go. That you're not going to fall back into the old ways of doing things of fear or control or whatever that looks like. You have to decide which way you're going to serve. For years before even Pastor Henry passed away, he taught that we need to prepare ourselves for a season. He pioneered different things. He fought wars that none of us will ever understand. Those of us that remember those wars were not in his head. The only person that truly understands his mindset and his thinking, the closest possibility is mom. Any of the rest of us that sit there and say, well, I understood Pastor Henry's mindset. No, you've got a slight clue, but you don't understand all of it. I don't understand all of it. Sarah doesn't understand all of it. Pastor Donna doesn't understand all of it. But each person that stands in a place of leadership has to make that decision. Which God are we going to serve? What, what spies are we going to listen to? Are we going to look at something and say it's too great for us to handle? It's too much. And allow fear to control. Because now you have to look at this and how you lead your own family. How you run your own family. How you run your own business. See, Friday night we talked about preparing to receive a blessing. There was a prophecy that came. There were conversations that happened. That God wants to provide an outpouring. He wants to provide a blessing that m many of us have never even imagined, never of us even considered how to handle that. We don't know what that looks like because we've never been in that situation. But God is saying you need to prepare yourself to receive. When he first brought Joseph into Egypt and he raised him up, before the famine, he gave him instructions of how to prepare for a blessing. He put those in motion. One of the greatest things of how to prepare for a blessing is you better know your heart. Because with a blessing of financial blessing, let's just say we'll play that, or food blessing, whatever. Somebody gives you an entire 18-wheeler full of food. It could happen. Why think small? Somebody drives down your driveway, backs an 18-wheeler up from Whole Foods or whatever grocery store you prefer, and say, here's a year's full of groceries. Did you prepare for the blessing? 